Hey, it's that look. Hey. All right. Yeah. Hey, guys. Great to see you. Hey, Hi, sweetheart. How are you? How are we? We all set for today? Yeah. All right, listen. Here's what's going to happen now. I really need you to have some fun with me today. So allow me to set you up. Before we do that, let's celebrate. Hands in the middle yeah. here with me. Yeah. And let's celebrate. Okay, let's have some fun. So the word's going to be fun on three. Ready? One, two, three. Fun! Yeah. Would you like to see what we're going to cut? Yeah. Come on. You want to see what we're going to cut? Yeah. All right. Give me a drum roll. Come on. Give me a drum roll. Here she comes. She's not coming out unless she gets a nice drum roll. Oh, she's almost there. Ah. Okay, so this is where we're going to be cut. But here's what I want you to look at. When you look at this, look at the sense of asymmetry. might not be for everyone. It looks one length, but now let's take it upside down. Disconnected. It's disconnected, Kaylee. There you go, disconnected. It's not blended. Look, this would be the pair of jeans. Here's the skirt. There's the skirt, and here's a chiffon blouse that goes over that. Now, what's cool about this is, check this out. Look how when you touch that, just the frothiness of that, and how you get the fullness. What I want you to know and understand is that the crowns are getting longer so that we can get the sense of frothiness and volume that we want. It's the underneath here, this, this overlayer, this underlayer, excuse me, that we're cutting underneath here that has the degree of shortness to it. So you can see it doesn't attach. It doesn't blend, it detaches. And that's what's given us a sense of texture. Now I'm going to pass her around and I'm going to walk through what it is that we're going to be doing. First of all, let's work from a middle part. We'll separate front to back. So we're going to separate what? So we separate that front to back area on the right side and we'll also do it on the left side. Now, the reason we section is for control, especially today. With the irregular type patterns we're using, sectioning is critical. High point of the top of the crown and just to the high point of the ear. Let's separate this area. Let's go to the back area. In the back area, we're going to take it from just approximately top of the ear. Now, I'm going to drop mine down to just a little bit below the ear. Watch my, the incision point of my comb. So we're going to come in right about 3 quarters up the ear, not necessarily all the way up to the top. I want you to come about 3 quarters. Draw a horizontal line straight across. Now this line doesn't curve down or go angle like it used to in the past. If I could show you how to cut a graduated bob within two to three minutes within this back area, what used to take me 15 to 20 in the old days when I cut a graduated bob, would you be interested? Yes. yes. Okay, great. I want you to take this top section and I want you to isolate this top section up high up at the crown. All right, now what we've done is we've taken our horizontal section from ear to ear. Now remember, our product of choice is going to be from the clear moisture line. We're going to work with polishing prep. I find I love polishing prep in terms of maintaining some moisture. And also when I go in, we're blow drying as we go. It's going to give us that nice shine. Our tool of choice is going to be the texture shear. Stop. Hold it right there. I am also going to be teaching you from my virtual salon. Now, let's talk a little bit about that texture shear. When we want that hair to go under, we actually place the blunt blade on the bottom and the teeth on top. By doing this, that's going to give it a natural bevel or natural tendency to go under. When we want that hair to flip up, we simply take it and reverse it. The teeth will go on the bottom and the blunt blade is on top. That will give it a natural kick up. Let's talk a little bit about the analogy of that and why that works. If we go in and we close, we get a blunt hard line on the bottom and we get texture on top. So now it has sort of a baseboard that it's easier to get it to bevel under. If we reverse it and we take it with the teeth on the bottom and the blunt blade on top, you get a hard line up on top, you get the texture underneath, hit it with a round brush and it kicks up. Now let's get back to the salon. So now when we're working with this, we're going to read where we want the shape. So I'm going to take the section into the palm of my hand. So you can see how my pinky is wrapped right around the base of her neck. Drop it down to the base of her neck, now just slide. So I slide up and I'm looking for the bend in the hair. Look on the outside, see where it bends. Say yes if you can see it. Yes, you can see. That's telling me that's where the hair naturally wants to go over. So from here, you don't grab it. See where my thumb's at underneath? I've got it just holding on to it right there. What I don't want you to do is this, my friends. Don't do this and try to get a read. You won't get a true read. Let's take it, comb through, fine teeth of the comb, comb through that, base of the neck, blouse up. I'm not going to go at the end of the bend, I'm going to go right at the base where it starts to bend. Can I say that yes if you can see that? Yes. yes. Okay, once I see that, release your left hand, 
If you're right-handed, put the comb in your left hand, comb down to that line that you visualized where the bend was, keep the spine of the comb flat to you. Don't do this. Don't angle it. Keep it flat. The blunt blade goes in, slides in underneath the bottom. The scissor is flush with the comb, and I move the scissor left to right. Why do we move the texture shear left to right? Yes, to cut all the hair. Thank you, Kaylee. So what? Moving left to right allows me to cut that line in. Now I come through, I check, and look and see how that line's happening. Okay? Once again, wide teeth of the comb come through. Any hair that I missed, go in. Look. And the teeth are pointed towards the neck. So I'll give you the angle. See how they're pointed towards the neck. If I wanted that hair to flip up, I'd be holding it in my finger angle, and the teeth would be pointed the opposite way, holding it and going in and cutting. Okay? The line we're going to cut is going to be square. The spine of the comb acts as my line. So we comb down to that. So I am flush right up to the comb, and now I move left to right. Is my comb parallel to the floor horizontal? You are my mirror. Say yes if it is. Yes. yes. OK, great. OK, now I come through, and I'm just cleaning up my edge. Now, don't use a shear that has a lot of gap in it. In other words, it's a true blending shear that I'm working with. Now I'll take a look at it, and you start to see the square line that I have. And you can just start to see, I'm going to use my hand and my comb and just put it in blow-dry position so I can get a true read of my line. Now, that hot tip. If this is uncomfortable for your hand, hold on to your scissor, bring your hand over the top, and cut overhand this way. So this might be comfortable for you to do. The most important thing I want you to be aware of, the scissor is flush to the comb, to the spine of the comb. Coming in, cleaning. Now, I'm not going to claim to be perfect. I'm going to take a step back. Look how I take a step back, and you can see that true horizontal line. I'm going to come through, clean up anything I need to clean up. Now here's an important step. Stop. Hold it right there. Just stop for a minute. I've got something really important that's going to save you a lot of time. Blow dry as you go. Let me show you. Now let's talk about the concept of blow dry as you go. Today, our guests want in and they want out without sacrificing customer service and quality of service. Let me talk to you a little bit about this. Do you remember the days when we would dry cut everything? The reason we did that was for our benefit, not for the benefit of the guests, but it was a visual exercise so that we could see the seamless graduation that we were able to create. The whole idea behind this is maximum results with minimum effort. Now, let's go and explore how the section is done once we have this dry. We're going to take a section left of center, right of center. We're going to hold the comb from the top, working with the fine teeth. Working with the what? Fine teeth. Comb goes in, place the hair vertically into the comb. Now, all I'm simply going to do is, without disrupting what I have isolated on top, my left hand slides right behind that. I now glue the comb and my finger angle together, vertical. I slide up, release the comb about halfway up. You will see a short piece of hair there. Now I want you to go to your blunt scissor. Which scissor? Blunt. blunt. So we're going to use our blunt shear when we graduate. Shear comes in, and I cut a vertical straight line. Now watch this angle. This is cool. This angle does that. So I created diagonal graduation and all in one motion, vertical. And now you start to see the silhouette of the bob. You can see that, Carol. That one angle, boom, done. One, one degree of elevation straight up. Don't adjust the finger angle. Section two, slice of where I'm going. See those two vertical sections? They're parallel to each other. Put my comb in vertically. My hand comes right behind that. And now all I simply do is slide that up, release the comb. There's my short piece. Take your, your shear and cut a vertical line. What I'm teaching you here is to cut a little bit more of a textured geometrics inside of this graduated bob. How many sections have I cut so far? Two. Two. One was my center guide to the right of center. Now I go my last section. You simply bring the comb in horizontally, turn it vertically, because now we are going to over direct this section and square it back. So I'm here to there. My hand goes in square. Vertical, I slide up, there's my short piece. All I'm teaching you here is to cut off the corner. When I release that, look at the graduation of that side, and look at what's been cut. Look how simple, how quick, and easy. 
Let's go to the left side now. Left side, my fingertips are pointed what? On both sides of the head, your fingertips are pointed up. Here we go. Take a slice of the direction we're going, a slice of where we've been. Now hold your pin from the top. Hold it up at the top. Then I want you to just take your pin, put it in vertically. The hair is in the pin in your comb now. Now take your left hand and slide it right behind your comb. Excellent. Now keep the comb glued to your hand and slide up together. Halfway up, release the comb. That way you can see the degree of shortness underneath. Now you come through and you cut a vertical line straight up and down. Now release this line and look at the graduation fall. You can really just see that angle that you just cut. That's what's so beautiful about this in terms of the maximum results with minimum effort. Okay, here we go now, last section. What do I need to do on this last section? Over direct and square it back. So it's squared back to the hairline. Hot tip. Straight back from the ear. Straight back from the ear. Thank you very much. Straight back from the ear now. Hot tip, left side. Loosen the comb, do this for me now. Loosen the pin up in your hand so it does this. Now bring your elbow up and point it up to the ceiling, all the way over. Comb comes in horizontal now. Now all you simply do is turn it to a vertical line so that the spine is lined up with the hairline. Now when you have that, don't slide your knuckles, keep them close to the head, slide up, and release what's left. Now one key I want you to remember, you are not sliding out, we are sliding up with the knuckles attached to the head. Allow me to go to the flip chart and I can show it to you on here. Let's recap what it is that you're going to be doing now because you're getting ready to go walk over there and cut this. Horizontal section, three quarters of the ear up, horizontal. Comb it down with the wide teeth of the comb. Square your spine of the comb to the section. Wide teeth squared. You will now take the texture shear, the blending shear. The blunt blade is on the un underneath with the teeth on top. Knuckles are close to the head. They do not leave the head when you slide up. Look for the short pieces you got. Let's talk about the over direction. Take a slice left of center and right of center. Straight out from the head, straight out from the head, straight out from the head. The last section, you square it back. Straight out from the head, straight out from the last. Last section, you square it, up, square it back. And your fingertips are pointed up, thank you, Rachel, on the left and on the right side. What questions do you have? What concerns do you have? Now, this is the part that I'm really excited about. We're going to move into the do section where the learning really happens. And any questions that you might have, this is where they're going to be answered. Okay. Now, we're going to get a read. Hand comes here over on top. Mm -hmm. Push up. Now, where would you cut that? Yes, I'd move it up even a little bit higher, right in here. See where it starts to bend, right there. I move down too flat, down here. You can see it's starting to kick out. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to visualize that. Okay. Comb comes into our left hand. Okay. Now we're going to come through. We're going to use the white teeth of the comb, keeping it square. Visualize where that line was. Scissor now goes in on the bottom of the comb. Add a girl flush to it now. Get the scissor flush up. There. Now open and close, left, right, left, right. Yes. Now, why would we suggest you go back and forth, Ann? Less the Less the cut. Well, that, yeah, that way what happens, if I keep closing the texture, the shear on the same spot, I keep cutting the same cutting spot the same and spot. not the hair. Mm -hmm. See, I want to get all of that hair off. So you move left, right, left, right. Beautiful. Let's start in the center. Set up your center line first. Right there is where your line. Now, look how I've got that comb more square and not like this. Now, shear goes in. Excellent. Great. Excuse me, put your left foot forward, more forward, and right foot back. Excellent, great. Now, I'm going to help you out. Take your hand out, bring your hand on top. There, now go after it. Now, see how that's more comfortable? Yeah. Excellent, now start moving. Left, right, don't cut your thumb. There you go. Now, next thing you need to be aware of, keep this scissor flush up to the comb, as flush as you can. Now, check this out. Look at how your screw head is right here. You can't get it in because of that, correct? So now, let's take the comb out. And let's move the scissor over. You see how I just now, you see how you go up to that point. Okay. You see how that works? Now look how flush you're able to do that. Now left, right, left, right. You see that, Courtney? Yep. Okay, go ahead and start cutting. Beautiful. Now keep going in there, cutting that length off and staying square. Okay, any questions or concerns? No. Okay, awesome. You're doing great. Today, do you find that your guests, they want in and they want out, yet without sacrificing customer service and quality of service? Let's talk a little bit about the concept of it. So the idea is that once we completed a section, we go in and we blow dry that section. 
Then we go in and we create our graduation. Do you remember the days when we would dry cut everything? The reason we did that was for a visual exercise. It was for our benefit, not necessarily for the benefit of the guest. It enabled us to see the visual edge that we created in that graduation. I remember the days when there were times we would go in and we would cut everything completely wet. Then we would come back, we would resection that back up, wet it back down, and go in and start our blow dry. Very time consuming. The story is about maximum results with minimum effort. Now let's go in and discover the sectioning that's happening with this particular shape. Left of center, right of center, I elevate straight up. Let me see you do that now. Excellent. Okay, fine teeth of the comb. Why? Because we're graduating the hair. Beautiful. Okay, good, excellent. Now, excuse me for standing behind you. When you, after you take your slice, I want you to reverse the comb like this, then put it in. Then your hand goes in. You see the mechanics of that, all right? Go ahead and hold it like you normally good would when you slice. Nice. Great. Okay, now reverse it so you're holding it from the top. Excellent, Ashley. Now don't pick up some of that hair that you have there. Control your comb. Excellent. Now hand goes in. Beautiful. Together, now slide, release, and cut. Awesome. Now watch that line. Follow that line as, it, as you... Follow it. See how you got that diagonal line? Oh, There's yeah. your diagonal line of graduation. Now you're starting to get the graduation you need in that. Okay, okay? cool. All right. Nice job. Wherever your body is, you will always comb to the center of your body. We will always comb to the center of our body. So if my body is right here, what did I just do with this over direction? I just took it off. It's not traveling as far back. Watch this. Watch my body move. Here's how I'm holding it. Did you see what I just did? One little baby step. One little baby step. Can you see one little baby step off of where we did? Can you see what difference happens to the length? We gotta be aware of that because of the hairline. Great learning experience here, my dear. Great learning experience. Love your graduation. Now let's go in depth and let's talk about body position and how it relates to what we do when we pick up and cut the hair. Every time we pick up a section, we need to be aware of where our body position is because our body position will determine on how much weight and length we throw when we utilize over direction. Let me give you an example on this. If you're right-handed, whether you choose to cut palm to palm or whether you choose to cut over your hand, more than likely, we tend to cut the right side shorter and leave the left side longer. Follow me to the left side. Here's why. When we go in, palm to palm or over our hand, look what's in front of us now. It's our arm. So our body doesn't move. So more than likely, we will have a natural tendency to over-direct the left side. Therefore, it's longer. So always be aware. Where is your body position in relation to the section, in relation to head form? And you will maintain proper balance of the shape all the way through. Now, we've been able to look at step one. Let's go take a look at step two. All right, so we completed step one. Do me a favor, give yourselves a round of applause on step one. Excellent job. Permission to move on to step two? Yeah. Excellent, great, let's move on now. Here's what we're gonna do. We are going to come over now and drop everything. So let's just drop all of our sectioning. So you wanna drop all of that. And I want you to go back to a middle part. We get that all out of the way, middle part. Just comb everything down all the way around. Now once we've got that, we're gonna come over to her right eye. We're gonna feel for that eyebrow bone, that bone that's right here. Everybody reach up and just touch your eyebrow bone right there. Okay, that bone. Place the spine of your comb on that bone. Rock it up. You will go just above recession area. That's where you place your comb and you start to work your horseshoe section now around. Now, here's what we're doing. Instead of working horseshoe section, let's drop this down diagonally to the top of the ear. Look as I come bring it around. See how it comes up and it drops down now. What we want to do is we want to create asymmetry inside the shape. Why would we even want to create a sense of asymmetry inside the shape? Is asymmetry soft or harder than, asymm than symmetrical? Soft. Softer, exactly. So we want a sense of softness. Now, look over the left side. Her left side behind the ear, there's less hair. We move over to her right side. There's more hair, it's thicker, because the section is what? Higher, is it not? And here it is lower. Less hair, more hair. Now we're going to go in and cut our length. 
Here's how we're going to cut this. When we come to the front, we want this to drop down in a curve so it does this. So we're going to establish our point of reference. Our point of reference will be front to back. So we separate front to back. So we take that away. Now we have all of our length here. We're going to cut the length with a blunt shear. So we're going to work with the white teeth, bring our comb down. You are going to cut to the perimeter edge. Do not blend this in with your graduated line that you have up above here. You will cut to the perimeter edge. So here we go. Perimeter edge, my comb comes down, I stay nice and square, scissor flush to that, and I continue to work my way around nice and square here. White teeth, because the white teeth, there's no tension. Fine teeth, I'm going to get a lot more tension. Coming right around, always squaring my body to what it is I'm going to cut. This way I can continue that line. Watch this. If I move my body back, look what happens to my elbow. I drop it, the line has changed. So you want to make sure you see the spine of your comb nice and horizontal here. Okay, so we bring it down there. Scissor goes in, make your cut. Now, next thing, we take our tools, we place our tools away. And what do you think we're going to do now? Dry. Dry. We're going to take diagonal slices, and look how I just leaf it. So you come in, you leaf, and the dryer follows. You leaf. If we come in square and we do this, chances are we might get a bend and a crinkle. Now you're trying to get it out. So come in, go diagonal, just leaf and follow, leaf and follow. Get your moisture out. So because we're going to disconnect, this is what's going to give us the texture and give us the frothiness, that these areas do not blend in. Okay, now let's place the dryer down. Look at the flatness that I've got there. Now let's move to the front. So we come back with our blunt shear and with my comb. Now this is critical. Watch this move here. Rather than playing the guessing game here with my finger angle to get this angle and then looking at it and saying, oh, it's too long or too steep, now we're adjusting the angle. Let's create a proper flow of this curved line that we're going to see here. Remember, this is going to be a curved line, not a straight A line. It's going to be softer. So we come through, we align our finger angle horizontal. We align it what? Horizontal. So it's horizontal. Now you're here standing square to it. I take a step to the left. Now watch my body square to the back of the head. I square the back of the head. My knuckle didn't move. It stayed there, and I cut a horizontal line. When I release this horizontal line, watch what happens. I automatically get the flow of the A line without playing the guessing game. Now here's the thing that's important. Most, of, uh, most people want to do this right away. And then they want to turn. Now you've made it way too long. You square first, and you let the hair slide in your hand. Watch it slide. I come back. Here's my horizontal line right to me. I'll give you a square view of this. See that? Square, square, square. Now we're going to come through. What am I going to do on this side now? Blow dry. Once I get my moisture out, I want to talk to you about another concept I'm going to introduce to you that I'm going to suggest that you do as you're working and as you're cutting. So I come through. Okay, now we take the brush away. We take our flat iron. I'm going to take a little bit of my polishing prep, but I'm just going to miss that top surface with polishing prep. So let's talk about the concept now of flat iron as you go. We've been flat ironing with our comb so that we straighten the hair. Now what we're going to suggest to you is put the blow dryer down. Quiet the salon down. Remember, it's heat that transforms the shape of the hair. So let's use the heat of the flat iron and our nine roll finishing brush to come in, hit it with heat, mid shaft to ends. Now imagine, this is you with your blow dryer doing this. So what we're doing is helping you release the pressure from your shoulders. There's the heat. Look how I just skim the surface from mid shaft to ends. And now we simply come through. This would be once again our blow dryer. Listen to how quiet the salon is. Now when you release it, look how much of a more polished finish we're getting. Watch again, simply taking a section, coming through mid shaft to ends. Look how I hand the hair to the brush, brush to the flat iron, to the brush, to the flat iron, to the nine row finishing brush, to the flat iron. Nine row. Look how I just softly roll. Now I've got the heat. Now set the shape that we want in. Allow it to cool. And look how we're getting that finish. Remember, maximum results with minimum effort. Rather than the blow dryer being on for a long period of time, it allows us to have a conversation. 
It allows the salon to be a lot more quiet. More importantly, it allows you to get a quality finish. We're now going to layer or graduate step two. We're gonna take the outside corner of the length of the length. length. So it is not the inside of my graduation that's going to be my guideline. It's going to be the outside of the length. All we're gonna simply do is elevate this up, so we elevate. Now we come through, once I see my length, my length kind of drops out. There's my horizontal line, cut a horizontal line. You will take the entire section up at once. Here we go again. Why teeth? Why? Because it's a lot of hair. I'm condensed cutting a lot of hair instead of fine teeth, tougher to get through. Why teeth come up? Watch me continue my horizontal line. Watch me line up horizontally. Look how my comb is horizontal. Now let's talk about this. With this section I am cutting, can you see that because this went down and I'm cutting horizontal, can you see that that's pretty long? Yeah. What's going to happen as I move around the head? Because the section it starts here and it drops low, the natural common tendency is to want to cut this. When I cut that, what am I throwing more over here? Length and weight. What do I already have over here? Weight. Why? The section is higher. Here, I don't have as much weight. Can you see how one horizontal line, but look at the weight I've been able to distribute. This is huge. I want you to get this. I really want you to get this. This is big. It's big time. Okay, now watch. Let's separate front to back. There is front to back. Let's just isolate that, stop, and hold everything. This is really important. Let's reinforce that whole principle of body position. Follow me. Every time we pick up a section, we need to be aware of where our body position is. Because our body position will determine on how much weight and length we throw when we utilize over direction. Let me give you an example on this. If you're right-handed, whether you choose to cut palm to palm or whether you choose to cut over your hand, more than likely, we tend to cut the right side shorter and leave the left side longer. Follow me to the left side. Here's why. When we go in, palm to palm or over our hand, look what's in front of us now. It's our arm. So our body doesn't move. So more than likely, we will have a natural tendency to over direct the left side. Therefore, it's longer. So always be aware. Where is your body position in relation to the section, in relation to head form? And you will maintain proper balance of the shape all the way through. Here's the mirror. You are the mirror. I stand behind her, I lift, I let my little outside guide drop, there it drops, look at my hand, it is horizontal. Now I move and square my body to the next section I pick up, I pick it up, and I see the guide, there's my guide, and now my line is what kind of line? Horizontal. horizontal. I move, I square my, my body to the next position, I lift up, and I'm going to cut horizontal. Now, here's where the panic strikes. Take a look at this, and you're going to go, you're going to cut all that off. You're going to get a big hole here. Well, let me ask you this. Can you see that none of this reaches the cutting position? Mm -hmm. yes. So I'm leaving my length, but taking away the graduation that sits on top. Did everybody get that? Yes. Okay, so I'm here, up. Look how easy this is, up. Trust it, and cut the darn thing. Okay, now watch when I release this. Take a look. Look at, the, look at the shape, look at that. Look how flat it dropped. Look at this. Look at the degree of shortness I have there. That's panicky, but what, remember, we want length on top. Look at our benchmark. Look at what I just cut. I'm cutting the inside of that. You see that? Here's that degree of shortness that's inside there. You can see that, it's inside there. Look at the length that comes over that. That's why this, when you touch it, the wind catches it, it gets frothy. Okay, now let's get to the front. What am I going to do when I get to the front? Very simple. You're going to stand right on the right side of where you're at. Release your isolation. Lift it straight up. Here's another panicky moment. You lift this up, and I look for my short piece that I have back here. It's my horizontal guide. Everybody with me? Say yes if you are. Yes. Okay, now what do I do? Turn. I do a half twist back. Bingo, there I am there. I cut this line horizontal. Now watch my graduation fall. 
How cool is this? Is it not cool? Watch. Look at the graduation. Boom. It went down. And what was I able to keep? My corner. This is great. Maximum results with minimum effort. That's what we're talking about here. So all I did is my sectioning that's giving me the shape. It's my sectioning. But now it's this half twist motion that creates a graduation. Sam, why do I have to twist it? Twist it? Because I'm trying to teach you, rather than playing this guessing game, lift it up. Now, let's go that angle. No, that's too steep. So what do we do again? Recomb it and recut it. And now we let that go, and we look at it. One motion so that the front flows to the back, connects to the back. The back flows to the front. OK, let's take a look at the sketch. Step two. Now you have a visual. What's the first thing we do? We come over, we get our sectioning. We place our comb right onto that eyebrow bone. Place your comb in there, draw a horseshoe. As you come around, you drop the horseshoe down to the ear. You can drop it to about the top. Remember now, this is not about being perfect. Once we have that, we cut, we bring the length down, we use a blunt shear, and we square it off and work our way around. Make sure you separate front to back. That is critical, very critical. Let's go to 2B. Once you have that, you've cut your length all the way around, and you twist it back. You're going to come to 2B. You're going to use the outside length as your guide. So that outside length that you cut one length right here, that's your guide. You lift that up. When it falls out, that's your starting horizontal point. You cut a horizontal line. Okay. Now, this looks like it may go up as you go. That's just remember, the head is round, so that's what I'm trying to show you. Look at the front view of this. When you get to the front, you're here. Your hand is horizontal, but what's it do? Twist Half twist back, cut a horizontal line, and then you'll end up with the line dropping down. As I come around, here's my over direction. You're, you start on the left side, straight up off the head. Straight up off the head, no over direction, no over direction, no over direction, no over direction. When you get behind the ear, here's your half twist back. Can you see you're overdirecting that front back? That maintains the length. That is critical. Now we're going to move into the do section of step two. Remember, we saw the do section of step one. This is where the learning really happens. Let's take a look at how the graduation is created in step two. Here's what I want you to do. So that you know where you're going, I want you to separate front to back right there. Separate your front to back. Why are we separating front to back? So you know where to twist. Thank you. Yes, so you know exactly where to do your half twist. Remember now, if you don't know why you're getting the results you're getting, I want you to get Chris Barron's Fuel for Education because that DVD will tell you, explain to you why you're doing what you're doing. That's critical. This is a point of reference that represents a change of direction. And in that DVD, Chris will talk about that and set you up on the principles of design. Very critical to get that. OK, here we go. Here to there. I take it all at once. Get it all in your hand. Everybody with me? Yeah. See? And I can see my guide. So you're here. I don't want to slide past that. Now what do I do? Look at my knuckle. It stays there. And all I do is pivot. So you pivot your body. And you're around to your knuckle till it's horizontal. Now I cut that. Okay. Okay, let's see you do that. Okay. Okay, good. Bring that all in. Good. There to there. Now half twist back and walk back. Excellent. Right there. Cut it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And cut it. It's a lot of hair to cut at once. But what I'm trying to teach you is you get the nice curved flow from the back yeah. to the front. Cut my knuckle out. There you go. Now release. And now look at the flow of length that you get that drops to the front. That's exactly Beautiful. what you're looking for. Okay? okay? Now you blow dry and flat iron as you stand behind. You lift it up. Let the outside fall. Let that fall so you know where you're at. Now go horizontal. Mm -hmm. And all I do is keep combing the hair up to this line and follow that line around. Sex Separate that front to back so you know where to go to. So let's just clip that out of the way. Okay, okay, here we go. Let's graduate on the left side. So now you want to use that left side as your guide. So you come up and straight up. The hand goes over the line of your section. Good. Excellent. Right there, cut a horizontal line. Beautiful. Now move your body. Excellent. Straight up. Beautiful. Move it straight up. So the elevation is 90 degrees in relation to this room. 
So you see how she elevated at 90. The line she's cutting is what? Horizontal. Horizontal, 90 degrees also. Now she moves her body. Always square your body to the section you're cutting. That ensures that you're going to cut that horizontal line. Now here's where the panic starts. Why? Because it's a lot of hair. Because it's a lot of hair and a lot of length. <laughs> but it's great because, remember, what hair is actually being cut? All of the top of the that that you've got. The bottom does not reach to the cutting position. Up. Beautiful. This is where the panic really starts. And if you're not sure, the hot tip would be grab this underneath and just see that it falls out. If it falls out, you're safe. And cut it. Excellent. Now let's just examine the graduation. Beautiful. Now look at the shape, how lean the shape gets when you do that. That's the beauty behind this. That's what's awesome about this whole thing. Now let's watch this right side. Lift it straight up, square it up, sorry, square it up. Excellent, great. Now, now here's the, the one problem that's happening. Everyone slides past their guide. When you slide past your guide and you go in and cut, you will always have a step. Always remember that. You always want to see your guide so you're able to connect the line visually. Okay, so let's do that again, recomb, and elevate straight up now, get it up. There we go, good, perfect. Now rotate back. Excellent, great. Now your hand should be square right there. Now cut, because that ensures that you maintain this link that you have in the front. Excellent, now look at your shape. Beautiful. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now here's what's great about that is this is, member. the objective is we're making these more lean. Had we not gone in and cut it this way, watch the, look, this is so cool, this is so cool. Check out the angle we're cutting. You have to see this. This is the angle we're cutting. Short, too long. Now, how many vertical sections would you have to take that and elevate to cut that short and long? Did that make sense? You just got it, didn't you, Rachel? So you can see, look at that comes to the cutting position. This next hair is getting longer. That's even getting any longer, and that doesn't reach. Oh, this is so cool. <laughs> this is so cool. Now that was great. I bet if you had any questions, they were answered right there. Let's go take a look and see how step three is created. Now, step three, what do we do? We let everything down now. Let everything down. Okay, everything drops. Start combing this forward and stretch drying it now. I'm not just taking this section and just wad it up anywhere. Because now I'm wait, taking time to get all of the crinkles out of it. So I stretch dry, stretch dry, stretch dry. Now watch where I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go right to the center of the crown area and I come around. Now where do I go to, Sam? You will come around and you will match the height of where you're at. So now I need to go higher, don't I? So there's my point of reference there, Jenny, see that? There's my point of reference, I wanna match that right across. So I come back here, I take a look at it. Now I come back to center. And it's here where I need to go higher, right there. Ooh, yes. Okay, now take a look at that. Pretty close, good. Now take this and start to set up what you want the front to do. We want the front to be a left side part. So why not start combing it this way? And now give it a soft twist so it starts to go and move in this direction. Save yourself some time and think about how you're isolating this hair, and I'm isolating it very soft. Notice I'm not twisting that very tight. I go one clip one way, and another clip another way, and now I'm ready. Coming over to her left side now, drop this down. We're gonna go with a blunt scissor. Which scissor? Blunt. blunt. So I come through, I come down to the perimeter edge, and what do I do? Just cut the darn thing. Staying nice and square, so I stay nice and square. I stay nice and square. If it jumps up on me a little bit, I can come back and take that back up. No problem. Hey, my friends. Remember, you're at a critical part in step three. Don't forget to continue to blow dry as you go. Also, product is not an option. It's a necessity. In step two and three is where I could go and apply my velvet gelatin. So you see, I can move from my polishing prep to my velvet gelatin when I go in and blow dry. Can you see the control of application you're going to have? How many of you notice Everything is cut blunt and horizontal. Haven't done one texturizing technique, have we? No. But look at the movement of the haircut in terms of how it moves. Look at today's bobs, look at that, it floats. 
You see how that floats? This is so cool. Excuse me. It's not about you right now. Okay. Watch this. This is so cool. Here's what's great about this. When I lift this up, look at how that has the ability to flick out and float. So they can take this to go under or they can kick it out. And it's not so much from the texture and what we've done. It is the Kaylee. It's the what? Disconnection of areas that's being able to allow it to float. Okay, so here we go. Step three, simple. I lift. Where's your guide, Sam? My guide is this short piece that starts to the left of my hand. The short piece that starts. It is not, allow me to say this, it is not the guide that's underneath here. If you follow that guide, the line came down to where? The top. top of her ear. So if I follow that, watch what that's going to happen. You're going to go down like this, and you're going to lose all this length. So you start over here as a point of reference of your length there, and now what do I do? Put my hand horizontal and follow the horizontal line again. Now look at my degree of shortness there. You see my degree of shortness. That is what's going to make this frothy when she touches it. Watch where I go now. Here, I'm permission now to stand behind her or I'll stand here. Here, I come through, I lift. Watch me lift. Everything wide teeth, I lift. There's my, my point of reference. Stay horizontal and cut your line. And now watch. Release. Now when I release, look at the, the shape I've got. Look at the sense of asymmetry. You can really see the silhouette, can't you? You can see how narrow it is in terms of that silhouette. See the narrowness in this? Now that's what we talk about, maximum results with minimum effort. You're liking it, aren't you? <laughs> okay, now let's take a look at the flip chart. Step three, what do we do first? You cut your length around. Your center back right here, follow the blue now. Center back, I come around all the way, and I even it on both sides. If you're with me, say yes. yes. Okay. Once we have that established, cut your length. Once you have your length established, you will lift this up. What becomes your guide? The little green area right there. Not this line that's going to drop down. You just lift up this little green area that you see. Remember, you've already cut this side, have you not, Jenny? Yes. Okay, that side right there. So you have some degree of shortness. That degree of shortness right there becomes your guide. From there, you square your hand to that point only, not to the line you're going to see down below. Okay? When I come over to the left side, no half twist, is there? It's just straight up and square it. Over direction, straight out from the head, 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 straight out from the head. What questions do you have? What concerns do you have? Are you anxious to go get it? All right, good. Now, there's some great learning going on here. Let's go to step three and take a look at the do. It's a critical, critical section. Show me where you were going to go now. Good. Excellent. Now, just get that little center point to the right. Right there is your guide. There it is. Yep. That, now, stay horizontal all the way around now. There we go. That was great. I love where you repositioned your hand more on top of her head. Great. Okay, now move your body, square your body to the next section you're going to cut. Come on, come on over by me, Ann. You can see this over here. Here's the scary part because it's over the ear. Nice and square. Awesome. Good. Now here's, you be careful of your blow dry. One thing I want you to focus is just on your blow dry. See this? Mm -hmm. You're giving up on that blow dry from the base to about uh, zone one. You're really good on zone two to zone three. I want you to focus on that. Look at your shape though. Look how nice it's looking. Beautiful. Good job. Give me some. All right. Now we're going to move to the final step. Step four, where you get to see the finished result. You are now going to release this on the top. So we're going to move her part to the left eye now. So now what we do is we take our comb. We come to her left eye. I simply comb this diagonally back. By combing this diagonally back, I then push it forward, and that will separate and part on its own. And now I look at it. And I say, okay, is that about where I want it? Yes, that's perfect. It wants to go there. I'm going to keep it there. Now, from here, left side part now, all I'm simply going to do is go in and take a center section down the center. Comb all this left side, center back, in its natural falling position. Take your blunt shear, and now release our length. 
So we come through and we hold your head straight up now. Remember, you move, we make a mistake. Okay, wide teeth, comb down, keep it square. I suggest you comb through it once. Keep it square, keep it square, my length. Keep my length square. And you're cutting all of the left side nice and square. Now watch the right side. We are now going to take all of this hair, we're going to over direct it back and we're going to square to the center, to the back. What I'm going to do is put another curtain of length over what we have long on this side. Watch. So we're going to take a vertical section. What kind of section? So I take a vertical section from her part, okay? Take a look at her part, see that? I just took that vertical section. Now when you're looking at that, that's a horizontal section from the top view. When you look at it from a side view, it's a vertical section. Get rid of what you don't need, bring all this back. And now what you do is you take this, hold it in your hand very lightly, and just take off your length. What I'm getting is helping you get the length off in a very organized fashion that's going to complement what we've done here. Take everything on her right side here. I take another vertical section, get rid of that. Watch the combing now on this. I bring this back, 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 back. Now watch my hand go with the head here, but now watch what I do. I just square it back to my length. Can you see now, I'm going to throw more, watch this, I'm throwing another curtain of length over that. Okay, here we go. Take this back, 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 comb it back to me, get it in your hand, and you can continue, keep taking small vertical sections. For the sake of time, I'm going to take the whole thing. I'm running behind. <laughs> okay, here to there. Now what do I do? Square this back. Where am I squaring it back to? To the line in the back. See that? All the way to the back. Now watch what happens. Look at the curtain of length that I just threw over that that's underneath. I love it. Can you see that? How easy that is. Now what do you think I'm going to do? Hold everything. Remember what we've been talking about. Last step in the haircut. Blow dry as you go. Maximum results with minimum effort. We're going to go asymmetrical. So in order for me to get something asymmetrical, I cannot stand on the center. I need to stand on the opposite side that we're going to throw the weight and length. So now, allow me to go to the flip chart on step four so you can see the position of your body and how it relates. Thank you. All right, here we go, step four, focus. Now, left side part to center. We, we took a center and we cut all our length square on the left side. On the right side, what did we do? Over direct back and cut the square length. Here we go now on top. When we want it asymmetrical, when we want it asymmetrical, we're going to stand opposite the right corner of her eye. So we stand opposite that. The center of your body stands opposite that. Isn't that interesting? Look at the angle of your shoulders. That angle that you see here is the same angle you're going to be taking across the top. So it is a diagonal line that works. So we're going to stand here. We take diagonal sections. We elevate the section up, and now we're finally going to do a texturizing technique. We're going to deep point cut into that. Each section will be over-directed to the previous section. Until you get somewhere in the middle, stay at a stationary guide and bring everything to that. Allow me to demonstrate it. I'm going to take my comb, put it onto the, that eyebrow bone vertically, straight up. That tells me where I need to center my body. Can you see that my body is now centered to that? Isn't that interesting? When I center that, Rachel, now look at the angle of my shoulders. That angle is exactly the angle we're going to take across the top. I'm going to come through, go back to my center part, and I'm going to hit it with a little bit of polishing prep, even after I've dried it. Now watch what I'm going to do. Now I want a little bit of frothiness and a little bit of volume. So let's use the round brush. Now, rather than taking a comb and flat iron this before we graduate the top, I'm going to recommend or suggest that you work with a round brush. The round brush will give it a little bit more smoothness and sleekness, but you can see where it gives it the direction in terms of me getting it to bevel. Could even make it move forward. So just start to think a little bit differently, use our tools a little bit differently. Here comes my first section, centered my body, first section. Now, you take this section, we lift this section up, and we do not, let me repeat, 
Do not blend this into your underneath, Courtney. Okay? You want to just soften out this bluntness of length that we put there. So watch Sam. I'm going to soften it. Deep point cutting is becoming a classical technique. If I hand, slide my holding hand out far and I choose to point cut, all I'm doing is making a very soft, jagged, blunt edge. So it has weight to it. When I want to release the weight, my left hand is going to go further down and I'm going to leave more hair out. Once I'm there, I'm now going to make and curl my hand into a fist. Everyone hold your left hand up as if you're holding the hair up. Excellent, great. Now all I want you to do is place your thumb right underneath that, about halfway underneath. About halfway underneath. Not out here, right here. Now simply curl your fingers around your thumb and bend your thumb and make a fist. Now you're in a fanning position. Now let's fan it. So we're going to fan deep. I'm going to fan that. When the scissor comes parallel with the hair, can you see that? Scissor is parallel, you release weight. Say yes if you're with me so far. Yeah, yes. If I come slide on a diagonal and go in, what am I releasing? Length. So you're taking off length. In this particular case, do we want to take off length? No. If I take off a little length, you're fine. Remember, you're going to soften this bluntness. So we're here. We soften. And notice how I move my fan. I don't move my scissor. Now, how do we cut? You touch and you close on the way out to ensure yourself you don't cut yourself. So I touch and I close on the way out. Release that. Now watch this. Release that. Now look at the frostiness. Look at this length that's fallen over that. But look how soft it is. Can you see my length jumped up a little bit? I'm fine with that. Okay. Next section. You will over direct to each previous section. So number two is over directed to number one. Number two will become my guide. And number three will be over-directed to number two. Number four will become a guide, and five will be over-directed to four. Until I get somewhere in the middle, just in front of the ear, and then what do I do? Stay stationary, and everything comes to that. So I ensure I throw some length to the right side. Okay? Allow me to go through it and watch and see what happens here. I lift everything up. Okay, and I'm choosing to release a little bit of my length, just so I set up some of the proportions. So I'm going to go in soft, but as I move, if I cut some of that point of length off, I'm fine with that. But I want to make sure I got a nice, soft edge to that. Can you see that? Watch when this edge drops now. When I release that edge, look at the frothiness that I get. Can you start to see the roundness that that gets out of that? You're able to get that softly lift because the underneath is gone. If this blended through, it would be very structured and it would bump up more, even higher. Not necessarily looking for that in this particular case. Now I come through, I slice, I lift here, up. Now watch, some of my length is coming off. I'm fine with that. Okay, remember, stay deep. Now I'm looking at, looking at the shape. I'll give you a profile view of the shape. Look at the shape fall now. It has an illusion of looking one length, doesn't it? Now I'm going to soften. And I'm also releasing a little bit of length on mine. You will also release a little bit of length on yours. This is going to be very judgmental. Texture is visual and feel. So I look at this and I see, what do I have as it's working? See how that's working? Okay, here we go here. Make sure your body is here. When my body does here, what am I going to do? Lift it straight up and now I'm going to square it. And now I've lost the length I might have had over here. Move off to the diagonal. Here. Now watch this. Notice how I'm having problems getting through that. What do I need? A little bit of polishing prep. Spray from a distance. Less is better with polishing prep. Don't get carried away with it. Now watch when I come through and I pick this section up, okay, and I go to comb through it. Now it's a lot easier for me to comb through. There we go. Excellent. Now I lift. Now look where my hand's at. My hand is somewhere placed over the middle. I'm going to give you a view of that. It's on a diagonal but it's somewhere over the middle. Here's where I don't want to be. This is where I don't want to be. Way back there. Now what happens to the front? Too long. Way too long. Now you have to keep going back and recutting the front. So watch your over direction. Lift it up. Now watch this. Look how I still got my length, but now that can kick. And I think I want a little bit more off of mine, just for proportion. This is going to be a matter of taste. Your taste is a journey in this industry. You remember that, my friends. Your taste is a journey. 
Over the years, Sam's taste has changed from being very precise about things and now being very loose about things. Why? Because shapes have become loose. So therefore, we have to loosen up our mindset. Back to us. Okay, up. I'm going to take mine a little bit shorter. Now watch where my hand's at now, Jenny. My hand has moved forward, hasn't it? Not so far back. So you continue to pick up each section. You got that, Dee Dee? Pick them up. You come through. Readjust if you need to by moving your hand forward. Here's why I love the result of this is when you take a look at this, it is amazing in terms of the versatility of this and what, it's, what you're able to get out of this in terms of versatility. Okay, she can get this to go under and get that, or she can come in, she can hit that with a round brush, and that will kick out. But what I want you to look is, look at the sheet of length here, and look at the sheet of length underneath. So you get this to go under, and that automatically kicks out. All right, cool. Okay, now let's go to something that's a little bit more rock and roll, let's say, that has a little bit more length to it. Okay, so we're going to come through. And I take my diagonal section on the opposite side. Okay, so now I have a huge triangle here. This is going to be her fringe. The objective is I want to cut a fringe that's right on her eye that does that. Okay, now how are we going to do that? We're going to take our blunt shear. Which shear? Blunt. blunt. Okay. We're going to come up. I'll raise the chair so you can see. Okay, keep her head nice and square. Take the section. You comb all of this forward. If you're right-handed, you will hold the hair in the right hand. Everybody do this for me, with me now. You, where you place your hand is where the length is going to be. That is critical. So if I put my hand way up here, how short is it going to be? Way down here, how long is it going to be? So now we're going to put our hand in the bridge of her nose. So we're going to comb through this really good. You have to comb through it. Look at my comb. It comes underneath. I position my hand in a horizontal fashion because that's actually the line that I want. When I'm here, now what do I do? Here, all you want to do now is point your hand to her nose. Do that now. Okay? Left hand comes directly over that. Here's what I want you to see. I do not take my hand and do this. Now I just change the cutting line. You come over flat over that. Everybody with me on that? See that? Let me go back square to you. So I'm here. Now what do I do? Now my left hand comes over that. Hand the hair to your left hand and continue your twist. Allow me to do that one more time. Do it with me now. Okay, here to there. Now turn. Bingo, there she is there. Left hand comes over. Hand the hair to the left hand. Continue your twist. Comb through it and now cut a true horizontal line. Now watch when I release this. Bingo. Okay, right down on her eye. Look at that. Okay, so I just get this shape that does that. So it just arcs itself out all in one motion. Now I'm going to take you a step further. On fringes, I'm going to recommend that you don't leave them solid one length. They're very difficult to work with, to get them to bevel. Do you remember what we shared with you in the nape area? Yes. Yes. What did we do with our hand? Flat. And what did it take off? The top what? Corner. Thank you. It took <laughs> off the top corner. In order to get this to bevel like a mirror, watch what Sam's going to do. I'm going to take the top corner off of this fringe. Now watch. This is her nape area, just like you cut. I take a vertical section, left of center, right of center. My comb comes in. My hand goes behind, and now what do I do? Slide until I get to what? The short piece. Now what do I do? Cut. Now watch this. Now look at that fringe. Amazing in terms of, look at that. What's been cut? Look at what hasn't been cut. Look at this. Look at that. Look at the center of that. Let's do it again. My length is on the outside here. So what do I need to do to keep this length? Over direct to the center. So now all I do is pick everything up and I bring it to the center on this side. So I'm here. How cool is this? Here to there. Now what do I do? I'm going to drop my arm so you can see. I slide back. They're glued together, aren't they? Just like you cut the nape. There's my short piece. Trust it and cut the darn thing right there. Now watch when I release that. Bingo. Look at this side now. 
compared to that side. You can see it's just flattened it out. It's going to get it to go under better. Oh, God, I'm so excited. <laughs> Let me show you this side. Check this out. Watch. Here, over direct, center, here. Now look, I'm positioning my comb. Just position your comb so you can get to it. Now I come in, place it. Slide back. Short piece, I see it right there. Trust it. Come in, cut, and bingo. She's got her fringe. Now look at, look at the weight of that fringe, how it's gone. It's not so heavy. Now we've just been able to see how we achieved cutting the fringe. Yet the most important thing today is the finish. Hot tip for how to finish the fringe. Rather than taking our blow dryer and our brush, let's work with the comb and our flat iron combined together. We're going to work with the fine teeth of the comb and also aware of how we're using the spine of the comb. We're going to come through, take a slice, making sure we work all of our tangles out of the fringe, nice and smooth, to the flat iron, immediately roll and start moving with the flat iron. Notice how I'm also rotating my comb and rolling it, working right over the spine. Flat iron to the comb, to the flat iron, to the comb, slow motion. Continue to work one to the other, one to the other. Now once I, I'm done, I allow that to cool and release, and I get that to bevel under. You can work this entire technique around the perimeter edge on any of your bobs. We also have a special bonus fringe for you. Simply just go to the menu button and you'll see the side sweeping fringe. Now let's go look at the finishes on step four. Remember we were very detailed on the top. Let's take a look at the fringes on the do step four. Beautiful, absolutely stunning. Okay, now watch. That's what I want to learn how to do is that Okay, good, come over here and I'll show you. You want to step on this side. Okay, so you step on the opposite side you want, put your hand there, put the hair there. Now do that with me here. Now you just kind of mold it and look at my hand move. So my hand moves and now when I come in, bingo, it'll flow. Okay, you try that. Step over on this side. That a girl looking great, Rachel. Okay, there. Now, massage it. Okay, ready? And here. Good. And as you're doing that, roll your hand out. Okay, now keep massaging back and forth. Good, and roll it out as you go. Good. Now come in and do that. You feel it? Yes. Awesome. Now look in the mirror now. That's what I'm talking about. A floaty fringe that does that rather than it going in and being just feathered back. This is what I'm talking about now. Yeah, this is funny. some hair. This is great. She did a twisted fringe. Why is this slightly off center, Sam? That's because when she went to twist, she pointed right there. And boom, and then twisted. So she was slightly off center. Does that make sense? It is so important you stay center so you get the true arc. But if that happens, watch Sam. I'll come in. Close your eyes for me, please. So I ask her to close her eyes. And look at the angle of the scissor I go in. See how I'm going in like this, and I just arc it right back out. But I'm using going in on a diagonal and doing this. Keep your eyes closed. Okay. Now look at look. Come back over here, Kaylee, and look at look at the symmetry that we're getting out of that. You see that? Yeah. But here's what I don't want you to do. Most people will go like this. The blunt one. When you do that, you got a straight line with a corner, a straight line with a corner on something that is round. When I go in at a diagonal, can you see that I can create this and make it arc on its own? And look at this also. Look at the edge of that, how soft that edge is. Beautiful soft edge on that. All right, cool. Look at the lightness and the airiness of that. That's beautiful. Imagine what you can do with this with color now. Oh, this needs color. This head. Yeah, now the pattern you could use on this same would be the, uh, maybe the same pattern the way we cut it. Mm -hmm. So it might put some, so it'd be more of a blocking pattern that you use on the color. I would use a box. Yep. Good job, Jenny. Now, we have discovered Bobology from the beginning to the end. Let's just recap some really key things to remember. Disconnection is the strongest element within this design. Remember, there's four simple steps taking approximately maybe 20 minutes. Don't forget to blow dry as you go so that you get a quality finish. And as you can see, there's a number of ways that you can finish this look. Let's go back to That Look Salon and take a look at the finished mannequins. Here's what I want you to do. Just hold up your mannequin for me. Okay. Now hold her up very nice and proud. Hold her up in the air. 
Now stop admiring yours and admire everyone else's. Look around the room. Okay, take a look at them. Great shapes, look at the fringes. Now turn her where she faces that way. Turn her where she faces that way. Look around the room, look at the profiles. Look at the difference in the silhouettes and in the shapes. We were given the same instructions. It's just a matter of length. Now face her towards you, this way. Okay, now look at the fronts, look at the backs. Look at the backs, look at everyone else's, not yours. Okay, now let's turn her upside down. If you don't want to turn upside down, don't feel, just put her down. Okay, now look at your jeans. Look for the jeans. Can you see the jeans that we talked about? Oh, yeah. Awesome. Can you see the skirt? <laughs> <laughs> Can you see the skirt? Take a look at it. You see the chiffon blouse? Okay, bring her back up. Okay, now just move her side to side like this. Now look at the top float. The top should float. And that underneath stays very, very stable. Did you have some fun? Yes. Did you learn something? Yes. Awesome. Let's do heads and hands in the middle. Come on, let's celebrate. So heads in the middle and hands in the middle. The word is that look. What's the word? That look. This is your home. You're a team. And a successful salon is not made up of a group of individuals. It's made up of a team of individuals. And you always remember that. Mm -hmm. A team of individuals. You're an awesome team. Thank you so much for allowing me to come into your home. Thank okay? you. So, the word is success. That look, success. That look, success. On three. Ready? One, two, three. That, that look, success! Awesome! Yeah. Hey, later, guys. I can't thank you guys enough. Bye. 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 Give me a five. Give me some fives. Give me some. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Where's Susan? Susan! To me, my friends, the passion to learn never ends. And my passion to teach is even greater. The salons that I visit throughout America remind me how much I enjoyed the journey. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Mwah. Bye, guys. I'll see you later, okay? Bye. Remember what I said, just cut the darn thing. You got nothing to lose. Just cut the darn thing. We just saw how we created a full fringe. Here's another fringe for you, side sweeping. Let's take a look and see how this one is created. So now, allow me to take you through some fringes, okay? Side sweeping. She wants this side sweeping. Here's how I'm gonna do this. And I'm gonna give her a little soft, little piece over her eye, some softness over her eye. So now watch how we do this. Separate from your left side part to the corner of the eye. Take this, clip that back. Take all of this hair now. Bring it up and over. So I bring this up and over. But so that we have control, let's take just half of that. So you take your triangle section that you have here, take a horizontal section across, take this half, put it away. Take this section you have here, bring it over towards you. So I comb it flat across her head. Okay, everybody do that for me now. In your left hand, you are holding her hair. Okay, you just combed it over towards you. Now we're gonna take our left hand here. Don't do this, keep it in, up in the air. I'm gonna drop it so I'm gonna figure out where's this length gonna hit. I want it just below her eye, right there. Your hand is horizontal, put your hand up horizontal, good. Now you're gonna reach for your razor. You reach for your what? Razor. Okay, I come through and I turn vertical so the fingertips are pointed up now. Now I just made that longer, that is shorter. But because I twisted it, it moved in my hand. It's got a little bit of soft textured edge to it. Now I don't slide my left hand out when I cut with a razor. I do a nice little slide, soft stroke here, and I just whittle off the edge. Look at my left hand. It rolls. The reason it rolls is because it allows me to maintain the tension in my hand. Okay, everybody hold your hand up and look through it. Look at mine. When you see mine, I can see air through mine. Hold it up. Can you see air through yours? Anybody have? Yeah, if you don't see air, you got a beautiful finger angle. Okay, now watch. Take your finger and just roll it towards you. Did the air pocket close? Yes, now you've got tension. So now, that allows me to hold that section. Because the razor pushes the hair down in the pocket of my finger where I have no tension back here. Okay, second half of the triangle. You now take the second half of the triangle. You take this, you comb it all over towards you, towards me. Now I come through, see I've got it horizontal, do it again with me, a hand up in the air, okay? And fingertips turn, point it up. 
Now I come in and I cut. Now watch this. Now watch how that goes from soft to long. But here's what I want out of this. I don't want this fringe to feather back too vintage, too dated. Now you can see what I love about this technique is watch. This is what gets, gives you these, these fringes that just kind of float out that do that when I hit that with a round brush. Rather than going in and getting this to feather back. Jenny, question please. And I, I know you used your razor and it was really cool the way that, that worked in, but couldn't you just do the same with your point cutting? Excellent. Could I do the same with point cutting? You bet I could. Imagine this. Take a blade of grass from outside. Pull it. The base of it is what? Thick. Thank you, Lisa. Then when it comes up, what does the blade of grass do? It bends. And that's because it goes into a point. So that's what the razor does to a hair shaft. So I want the hair more pliable, I'll use the razor. That's when the hair doesn't have that pliability. Hot tip. Use your texture shear backstroke technique on it. So I could use that technique on it if I want to create some bluntness, just like deep point cutting would. Here's the side sweeping. You can see the control I have out of that. You can see that we still have our little curtain of length there. And this one here, I take a round brush and I kick that out so it does that. As I travel around the world, learning and bringing this education to you, I meet a lot of great salon owners. Meet Susan Parkinson, owner of That Look Salon in East Lyme, Connecticut. Well, I was telling you earlier, one of the things that I really do love is doing in salon programs because of the personal uh, influence that you can have on a stylist as a facilitator. So I'm, it's great to be here with you. Look at your retail shelf. You have done something different with it. What have you done? Well, we have rearranged it. It's not in numerical order anymore. This way, we're hoping that the customers can find what they're looking for based on the needs that their hair has. And I'm sure the numbers do help in order to help the guests find out how much control they want with their hair. I can see you've got volume set up here. You've got everything for smoothness set up in an area. So you've got a, kind of categorized your product, which is really cool. One question that I have is, out there in the road, I always get this, where salon owners are always concerned about stylists not being motivated about retail. How do you keep your team motivated? Well, Redken helps us a lot that way because they launch new products on a regular basis. Um, that's one of the biggest things. We love using new things on our customers, um, and that always generates new interest with the client and with the staff. Awesome. I know at Redken, there's one thing we talked about, how products is not an option, it's a necessity. Well, there's some other things that I want to talk to you about, and one of them is that I really want to say congratulations on your Redken Educational Excellence Award. Well, thank you very much. Let me see. Tell very, me a little bit about it. Well, I'm very, very proud of the staff for winning that award, but honestly, we really didn't even know that that award existed prior to being nominated for it. That's not something we were aspiring to win. We didn't know about it. We really just do the education because we love learning. So tell me about how important, as a salon owner, do you feel education is in the salon? Because as a stylist sometimes, I mean, being behind the chair, we all would talk about, I know when I was standing behind the chair for over 20 years that we talked about how we can get into a mechanical rut in terms of what we do every day. How does the education help you out your team? Well, it really makes our day much more enjoyable because we're able to revisit the things that we learn in our classes. And we were able to explore new ideas and put our own twist on them. It keeps us outside our box and keeps us from falling into any kind of a monotonous routine. So now, do you also have to attend show events also, aside from the insulin programs? Yeah, we do distributor-sponsored um, events, and we also do our insulons, and we also attend the exchange in New York City. Well, I have to tell you, I'm excited to be back. It's the third time that I am back in your salon, so please know it's an honor to be well, here with we you are and team. Thrilled. And I call you a team because I know that since I've been here twice, I'm impressed with how you have a team together, a very successful team together, and how they work together. How long have you been working on this in terms of getting these people together? Well, our group has been together um, a total of 260 years, cumulative. Um, we really have grown to not only 
work well together, but we really care about each other as well. Over 260 something years. Yeah, that's, we have a core group of people that have been working together for over 25. You know, Susan, when you think about that, that's some great, great experience in the salon. Now, in this weekend, in this class, what is it that you're looking for in the class? How can I help your team? Well, we're very excited to see the Bob. There's no doubt about that. But the, the Bob definitely the is Bob. back, isn't it? The, 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 but that would be the, the Bob. Bob. Yeah, the Bob is definitely back. But um, again, revisiting the ability for us to learn together. When we learn together, we are motivated and inspired to continue to learn together every day. We really, um, after you leave us, we feel the spirit of your energy and your passion. Well, thank you for that. I, th I know I'm excited to be here. I've got lots of great stuff, and I think that one of the things that I want to focus on and this weekend is talking about how maximum results with minimum effort. And would you agree, do you think that your guests, that they want in and they want out now? Yeah, I would think so. Good. Maybe not our daytime guests, certainly our evening guests. Good. I, I think probably we find that a lot of the guests out there, their lives are becoming very busy, yet at the same time getting them in and out, but without sacrificing customer service and quality of service Absolutely is very critical. <laughs> One thing I want to share with you that I'm excited about is I finally have my website up and that's samvia.com. So I'm going to invite you and your team to really check out the website. You're going to find in the future there's going to be some great educational tips that are going to help the team to continue to grow their business behind the chair. Well, we'll be looking forward to that. And, and I, there's other things too that are going to be taking place too. What about the tools that you work with in terms of that? How, what, how important are those tools? Well, you know, we're always looking for new things to interest us and to um, excite our guests. You know, that when we use new tools and we have new techniques, they definitely notice. Awesome. And so we're always looking for new things. Great. Well, I've got always. some great techniques that I want to share with you in terms of the blow dryer, not working so much with a blow dryer, but working more with a flat iron and brushes instead of working with a flat iron and a comb. So I'm very excited to share that with your team. I'm looking forward to our in-salon program. Well, we are too. We're very excited. We're going to have a blast. It's I can't wait.